Hi, welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today we'll be doing a deep dive on the executable and linkable format, also known as the L file. So the L file format is to Linux, what the PE file format is to Windows. It's the fundamental file format for executable and library files on Linux. There are three main parts of an L file. The first one is mandatory and the later two are used according to needs. We first have the ELF header, the second is the program header, and the third is the section header. The ELF header has two variations, one for 32-bit and another for 64-bit Linux systems. The only major difference between the two variations is the sizes of the members that they contain. We'll start by learning the size terminologies first because there are only two for each variation. So ELF32 half is two bytes, ELF32 word, ELF32 off, and ELF32 address are four bytes. For 64-bit systems, the ELF64 half is also two bytes, however, ELF64 word, off, and address are 8 bytes. So now let's get started with headers. The first member of the ELF headers is an array of unsigned characters named eIdent, where ident stands for identifier. This array is of the size eIndent, which has a constant value of 16 on both 32 and 64-bit systems. The first four bytes of this array contain the magic number, which has the constant value of hex 7f. This identifies the ELF file format. The next byte specifies the target architecture for this binary. This has three possible values. One means that the target architecture is 32-bit, two means that it is 64-bit, and zero just means the ELF file is invalid. The next byte specifies which type of NDNS the file is using, and everyone loves NDNS, especially me. The constant ELF data 2 LSB represents little NDN, and ELF data 2 MSB specifies big NDN. Today's video was sponsored by Malcor.io. Scanning files for unknown threats has become essential, yet the steps to accomplish this remains complex and demanding of resources. Malcor provides a new approach to malware analysis. It was designed to automate this process and all of it can be done online within a sandbox which is able to process samples within seconds. Malcor hunting allows users to look for threat intel. Users will be able to hunt by providing the IP address or Yara rule. Malcor also provides a number of scan options to run on uploaded files. Standard scans include the ability to check for file similarities using code reuse, there's an option to analyze domains, and you can also perform analysis on an executable. Pro scans allow you to perform a binary diff onto binary files, and there's also an option that gives you access to Malcor's threat feed and allows you to gather data from it. But those are only some of the options, there are many more that you can choose from to fit your needs. Malcor offers affordable account options for you to choose from that would best cater to you. Different tiers gives you different file upload allowances, hunts, and scans. But you can start by signing up for a free account today at malcore.io. The next byte we'll talk about identifies which OS application binary interface to use. Unlike PE files, ELF files are not exclusive to Linux only. It's also used in operating systems like Solaris or FreeBSD, and these are the possible values for this byte. The next byte is EIABI version. It specifies the version of the binary interface to use. Since the last byte identifies which ABI to use, this byte complements it and depends on it. EIPad tells that this is the beginning of the unused bytes in EIDent array and may be used in the future. Now back to the original struct. The second member of the struct is type. This member specifies the type of ELF file. It helps determine how the file should be treated and executed. It can have various values as you can see here on the screen. Next we have eVersion. This member specifies the version of the ELF file format being used. It has two possible values, EV9 for invalid version and EV current for the current version. eEntry contains the virtual address of the entry point or starting point for the execution of the program. eHoff stores the offsite in bytes of the program header table, which contains information about the various program segments in the ELF file. It helps in locating and parsing the program header table, and if the file has no program header table, this member holds zero. SHOFF holds the offset of the section header table, which contains information about the different sections in the ELF file. EH size contains the size of the ELF header, and it helps determine the overall size of the ELF file. Next we have PHENT size. It holds the size of the entries in the header table. Since every entry has the same size, this one value does the job. PHNUM is related to the previous member. It specifies the number of entries in the header table. So the product of PHENT size and PHNUM phnum gives the table size in bytes. If a file has no program header table, phnum holds the value 0. The next two members are similar to the previous two. shent size stores the size in bytes of each entry in the section header table, and shnum stores the number of entries in the section header table. The last member of the ELF header is shstrndx. This member serves the purpose of specifying the index of the section header entry that contains the names of all the sections within the ELF file. Moving on, we have the program header, and program headers are also known as segment headers. The names will get used interchangeably, so don't get 
get confused if that happens. The program headers define the memory segments that need to be created and their properties when loading the executable into memory. And here's how the header looks for 32-bit and 64-bit systems. First, we have type. This specifies the type of segment. This type determines how the segment will be handled by the loader, and it can have these following values. Next, we have offset. This represents the offset of the segment in the file. This value just indicates the location of the segment's data within the file on disk. Next, we have V address. This specifies the virtual address that this segment should be loaded at in memory. It tells the loader where to place the segment within the process's virtual address space when mapping it. T address represents the physical memory address. This isn't used in Linux L files, so we just set it to zero. The loader just ignores it. Next, we have P file size. This specifies the total size in bytes of the segment when it's on disk. Next, we have PMEM size. This specifies the total size in bytes of the segment when loaded into memory. This is how big it will be when mapped into the program's address space. We have P flags. This contains flags describing access permissions for the segment, like PFX for execute, PFW for writable, PFR for readable. The loader uses these to set initial segment permissions. Next, we have align. This number indicates the required alignment for the segment space address. The loader will position the segment at an address that is a multiple of P align. If you remember the Windows PE file structure and its section header, you'll realize that both of these have pretty similar members and specifications. Now we're going to look into the final headers, the section headers. This also has two versions, the only change being the size of the variables. First, we have sh name. This specifies the name of the section as a string. The second member is sh type. It specifies what kind of section this header describes. It determines how the data contained in the section should be interpreted and handled. And here are some example values. Next, we have sh flags, which contains flags describing attributes of the section. It can have these values. Next, we have sh address. This provides the virtual memory address the section should be loaded at by the loader. This specifies where to map the section and and if the memory address is unavailable, the loader will decide the location. We have sh offset. This represents the offset of the section in the file. It indicates the location of the section's data within the file on disk. Next, we have sh size. This represents the size in bytes of the section. Next, we have sh link. This contains the section header index of an associated section. The meaning of the associated section depends on the section type. Like, for example, for sections that are symbol tables, sh link holds the section table of the associated string table. The string table contains symbol names referenced by it. The sh info member also references related sections depending on the section type, like sh link. For sections that are symbol tables, sh info contains the section index of the associated relocation table if present. This relocation section applies relocation to the symbol table on loading. Next, we have sh address align. This specifies the required alignment for the section's address. It must be a power of two and usually set to the page size of the target CPU. And lastly, we have sh entry size. This specifies the size of each entry in the section, and it is only valid for sections that contain fixed sized entries. And that's it. That was the L file. Thank you again for watching and see you again next time.